Hello, this is FamilyCraft Dad. Welcome to the basics tutorial on the replay mod. Last tutorial we went over how to install the mod, but now we're going to get into the basics of how to use the mod. Here are five common questions I get when people first start using the replay mod. Question number one. How do I start the recording? The answer is simple. Once you have it installed, you just log into your server or open a single player world. And uh, well, yeah, it just starts recording. As you can see down here, right there. Yeah. Question number two. But then how do I stop it? Well, uh, you, you just, you just leave. It, it, it stops when you leave. <laughs> Sadly, you can't start and stop a replay in the middle of playing the game. A lot of how it works requires it to start recording the information right at the very beginning of the gameplay. Without that, it won't work. So there's no way to turn it on and off during gameplay, sadly. Question number three. I've gotten into the replay viewer and picked the replay, but all I can do is fly around in spectator. How do I get to the controls? The quick answer to that is, well, hit the T button. Yeah, that gives you, that gives you access to your mouse. Question number four. Well, how do I get back to spectator? I can't, I can't fly around anymore. Well, just hit the escape key. There you go. All good. So you hit the T key to get in and manipulate all this and uh, hit the escape key to get back to flying about. Pretty cool. Question number five. I'm getting tired of this five questions format. Can, can you just teach us how to use this thing? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I, I'll quit with the list gimmick. <laughs> Okay, so now that you know the basics of how to get to the various controls, let's talk about what these controls can do. The top bar's main goal is to help you traverse time in your replay. You have your play pause button, which basically, you know, as you can see, you can uh, make your guy move around and you pause it. And you have your speed button, so I can make him go really quick, like that, or really slow, like this. This guy up here, lets you jump around to the various points in the video. So if you go forward like this, you'll see I'll have built a couple extra things here. We keep moving around. Looks like I built a pillar at some point. And yeah, you can see me kind of working on this. Things slowly changing over time. Now you have to be very careful, though this works a lot like YouTube, going forward is a lot better than going backward in time. Notice how it takes absolutely forever to do. And that's because, like I said earlier, Replay Mod needs to have all of it rendered from the very beginning up to the point where you're at. So if you go forward, you're just rendering from this point forward, very quick and easy. If you go backwards, it's gotta render from all the way here in the beginning, all the way up to that point if that makes any sense. <laughs> so now that you can change both your camera angle and you can change your time frame, now we have to figure out how we're going to create our replay clip. Because you can't render it if you don't tell it where to put what and when. So yeah, that's what the second line is all about. This guy right here is a powerhouse. You could do all sorts of stuff with it. This is the time frame of your clip. This is the time frame of the actual replay, but this is your timeline for the clip you're editing. That's one of the biggest confusing points for a lot of people, but hopefully as time goes on, you'll start understanding what this is all about. In order to work on your clip, first you need to add what are called keyframes. That's these guys right here. As you can see, this one's called a position keyframe, and this one's a time keyframe. And what this does is up here, you have your time frame. And what you're gonna do is, say you wanted to start your clip right here at this point in time. Well, yeah, a little bit further up. There we go, we'll, we'll start from there. And we go right here and we click this. That's your starting time keyframe. And say, you know, this is too far away from me. I'm gonna go up close right here, looking at my guy. There we go, now I've set my position keyframe. Now that's all well and good, but this is only one. You need two in order to actually get a render going. You can't do it with just one. You have to have two of each. That way it knows how to go from this time to the next time and from this position to the next position. So we're gonna set a time. We're gonna speed this up and watch me do some little jumping around and stuff. There we go, we got some building going on. Some mob killing, yeah, yeah, good times. Uh, we'll stop it right about here, okay. And we will put a time keyframe right there. And actually, I'm gonna put the position keyframe a little further out, like so. 
And now if we were to use this play button, we can actually watch back those keyframes and see what they look like. Now, notice my guy just ran right out of the camera and I'm not looking at the right stuff, am I? That's what's so nice about Replay Mod because now I can edit this. If I'd used a Camera Studio Mod or something like that, that would be my clip. That would be it because I picked my keyframes and everything, I got it all set up and then I started recording and I'm stuck with that. But I'm not with Replay, so a lot of the action happened over here, right? So what we can do is we can add different positions. So we're gonna start here instead. And maybe we'll even have like a middle one. We'll go right here for the middle one. And the ending one, because I've kind of ran over there, I'll have it go up here instead. Now how I'm doing this is I'm clicking, I'm clicking this and then I can click this to remove it. And then I go to the right spot and I click it again to show it up. And now it's in a new spot. So now we're gonna hit play again. And now you can see that now that we can edit, we see what's actually happening on the screen, which is very handy. I could have gotten really crazy and zoomed in on all those mob killings and everything like that. But for this, we're just keeping it kind of simple just to get a good overview of what happened. But there you go. That's a very, very simple first clip. It works just fine. Um, I typically like to show a whole lot more within the clips, more like a time lapse. So what I would do is I would start manipulating the time, start it further back, like way over here, and maybe have a different angle to kind of get an overview of what's changing and, and things like that. But you can do whatever you want. That's the beauty of Replay Mod. You can even slow it down and get some really, really cool, like close up, like Matrix style stuff going on. It's, it's, it's entirely up to you. It's so open for creativity. I love the Replay Mod. So before I move on, I want to make sure that I've made clear exactly what was going on here. Right here, we're at 20 seconds, okay? And this is zero, so you can go all the way up. You can zoom in and out like this to see what's going on. And what I was doing is I was setting position keyframes and time keyframes at the various points in this timeline here. In order to add them, you just click a spot that doesn't have one on it and you add the keyframe. In order to remove them, you hit it again. Basically, you click on it till it's selected, boom, like that. Sometimes it's difficult to click. It changes where your time keyframe is or where you're at there. But then you click this and then you can remove it. I'm not gonna remove that because I like it. So yeah, that's the very basics of how to get this going up here. And we can get into a lot more specifics on good ideas and bad ideas when it comes to camera angles and you know, how fast is too fast, how fast is too slow, how to mix it into a song, the whole nine. We'll get into more of those kind of creative details later on, but I just wanted to give you guys the general idea of how to utilize the replay mod to get things started. Now, the final step, after you set up your awesome clip, you go over here, you click the render camera path button right here, boom. And now you, you've got all these options. Don't be scared by this. There are a lot of options. There's a lot of things you can manipulate here. One of the first things I do is I make sure the video frame rate is at 60. If you run your videos at 30 frames per second, you'll want to change that to 30. I think it defaults to 30. I put it to 60 for my own use. And encoding presets, you'll want high quality MP4. Um, some people like to do custom bitrate. You can change your bitrate and everything like that. If you know what you're doing, that's cool. If not, just, just stick to the very basic MP4 high quality. There's a lot of good options here. We'll likely go over them in a future video, but for the basic usage, just use MP4 high quality. Also, you'll have your options to be able to do various like 360 videos and 3D videos and VR videos. You have a lot of cool options here. For the basic video you're gonna be doing on YouTube, you're gonna do a, the default rendering, but Hey, who knows, you might wanna start messing around with 360 videos in the future. We'll go over some of these other options down here in future videos. These are more advanced settings. Uh, some of them are really, really good. This one's cool to look at. Uh, sometimes you don't wanna see the name tags of people. You just click that and you get rid of that. That's where you can change that. And yeah, there, there's a lot of crazy options down here. You don't have to worry about that. Just MP4 high quality get your right resolution, put the right frame rate based on what your other video clips are set to, 
and then you click this output file right here. You can you can choose where it goes. It defaults to a Minecraft folder. I will show that to you guys in a little bit. It's just the replay folder. And I just usually keep their default name and I can I can manipulate that later. It's harder to use this graphic interface to make that happen. It's kind of kind of clunky. So basically I'll just leave that there and I could just hit render. Boom. Now when in this screen, you can actually show what it's looking like. That way, if you choose to, you can be like, oh, 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 that doesn't look good at all and hit cancel rendering. Uh, but it does make your render run slower. So typically I keep that off. All right, and once you hear that sound, that means your render is done. Your render is done and now it's sitting in the folder. And as you can see, we have a nice rendering of the clip we created. This one's a very, very simple clip. You would likely do a whole lot more with your replay than uh, what I just did there for the tutorial. But I think you can get a general idea of just how powerful this thing can be. Now, if you found this tutorial useful, please consider clicking that like button. And if you think I've earned your subscription, then you have my thanks. But until next time, this has been FamilyCraft. Toodles. <laughs>